Hey, 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 everybody. Rob here. <clears throat> Glad to see you guys back. March 23rd, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's actually 30-something seconds afterwards. Did a little bit of a different uh, opening to the show. I did work on the opening. I promised you guys I would. I did do it a little bit different today. I am working on another intro. Uh, I think it's going to include the same intro you just saw. Not that this is important. <laughs> <laughs> but I told you guys I was going to do it. I did work on this weekend. I do my own uh, film creation and editing and stuff. I like doing that, and I'm pretty good at it sometimes. <laughs> but the point is, and I don't have a problem going to Fiverr and, and hiring somebody to do it. But here's the thing. Um, I've got a, I tried a couple different things. I did some voiceovers, and uh, I'm going to continue to work on it. But I, my goal is to have it done this week. I don't see a reason why I can't. Uh, you know, it's a process of elimination. You do three or four and you kind of play with them and you sit back and watch them and reflect on them and give them some thought and then you make a decision. None of them really stand out. So I'm kind of giving myself a little more wiggle room, if you will, uh, to change the intro. Anyway, enough of that stuff. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, I hope you guys are safe. As we know, the virus is the topic of the day, of the week, of the month. And of course, it'll be the topic for years to come. Uh, I hope you guys are being safe. Once again, the wife and I are continuing uh, to go about our normal life for the most part. Uh, we are, um, like I go to the park, I did some videos in the park, and I really hate cliche videos. Um, and the thing is, I, I did some out at the park. We went to the park. There were other people out walking their dogs, and people out uh, practicing soccer. Uh, there were people doing rugby. Um, there were people... Uh, running. I mean, that people are just going about the normal day-to-day -day activities. And um, so I could see that most people were practicing the, uh, you know, the six-foot rule, if you will, 10-foot rule, whatever it is. Um, but there were a lot of people that are out there, like the rugby. I mean, those guys are all over each other. And, uh, you know, I don't know what to say about that. Each person has to take responsibility upon themselves. Uh, but I'm not willing to take the risk. It's not because I necessarily, although I don't want to be foolish, and this is not about me. Uh, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, but the point is, is that uh, I have other people that I'm around. As you know, we have a grandchild that uh, has Down syndrome. And one of the traits of having Downs is, in fact, that they have a hole in their heart. Well, he had heart surgery to repair that. He's doing wonderful. He got that in back in December. And uh, it's miraculous uh, what modern medicine can do. And uh, but the thing is, a poor guy can't afford to have this in uh, his life. So we all take our uh, exposure, if you will, uh, seriously to other people and to the virus itself. So once again, we practice, we go about, we go to the grocery, we go to get gas, we go to people's houses. Um, if we go to their house, we all kind of keep our distance. Uh, we do our hands. Uh, we do our face, our steering wheels, our shifting knobs, our cell phones. We use sanitizer on all that once we get back into the car. Uh, we want to make sure that we do everything we can to eliminate any possibility that that thing will transfer if we are exposed to it. So I want to give you a little insight into our daily activities in regards to this virus. And I hope and pray that you guys are not in any way, shape or form being exposed to it yourself. I don't want any of my followers, listeners, uh, fans, whatever the term you may want to use to be exposed to something that could drastically change your life. Now, I don't know what to make of the virus. This is not a show about the virus. Uh, some people, they say, uh, have it and don't really show a lot of symptoms. And other people, obviously, it, it really takes its toll. And sometimes, as sad as it is, someone's life. And that is a tragic, tragic thing. So... You know, we the best we can do, guys, it's an invisible enemy. As the president said, it's someone that we have to combat, whether we can see him or not. And the thing is, is that the uh, way we can combat this uh, enemy is to do the basics. And as you know, not to tie this show with that, but we always teach the basics. What do I tell you guys? There's power and beauty and simplicity. Remember that term, power and beauty and simplicity. The power being what you can accomplish by doing the simple things, the basics. And the beauty of it is, is that it's simple. They're easy to do. 
So I hope, <clears throat> excuse me, I hope that you guys are in fact, uh, and just to let you guys know, you can use Lysol spray disinfectant, you know, that's in the spray cans. A lot of people go to the grocery and they don't buy that. They go right past it because they don't put two and two together. The Lysol and the generic brands that are like the Lysol that are in the aerosol cans are the exact same thing that you would get in the pump action uh, dispensers that have disinfectant, et cetera, et cetera, and the soap and so on. So don't overlook that. If you guys go to the grocery and they're out of hand sanitizer that's in the pump, okay, uh, dispenser type, then don't forget to go over to the next aisle. They're usually pretty close together and look for the spray disinfectant. You just spray it on your hands and you put a, You can put a good amount on your hands and wipe it on your face. It's the same thing. So I wanted to give you that tidbit and I meant to do that the other day. Okay, so since we've had uh, that little intro uh, into real life, we're gonna be talking about a very important subject today. And uh, as you know, it's gonna be five into 10. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. We're going to, if you stick with the show, you're going to learn what it is, how does it affect you, and how do you do it. It's an important uh, tactic, like all the things I've been teaching you guys. It's a basic one. As we get started, don't forget, once again, you guys are doing phenomenal. You guys are awesome. Don't forget to share our videos. Don't forget to share our various uh, social media platforms with others. Follow us, comment, comment. Uh, Subscribe to our channels. Please do all of that following, thumbs up, everything else. We can uh, we're, we can uh, get a feel, obviously, through your interaction with us, where we are, and whether we're hitting the nail on the head. With that being said, I'm going to continue our show by doing what? We're going to get this baby rolling in every day, except for the days that we're on the other computer. What do we do? <laughs> That's right. We do the gong. All right. We are officially started. Hey, that being said, uh, we're going to talk about a very important tactic that most people are not aware of, obviously. And today's podcast, number 23. Can you believe it? Number 23. And the topic is five into a 10. Okay. And you say, okay, Rob, what does that really mean? Well, that's a very good question. And the very first question we have in the ticker below, for those of you on the podcast, the ticker below is saying, what is it? What is that term? What does that mean? Well, first, let's talk about what is it? A five into a 10 means this. When you're out prospecting, and, and it applies to many different phases of your business, it's much like the one-third, one-third, one-third tactic that we talk about all the time. The one-third works its magic all the time either in a positive manner or negative uh, manner. It all is based on what? We all can say it together, your activity, your commitment, you working the numbers. And we're going to here this week. So you'll want to stay tuned for future episodes. Okay, so that being said, and the question is, what is it? What is it that the, I'm talking about when I'm talking about a five into a 10? It's an important thing. Here's what it means. When you're out prospecting, you're going to run into people. There's a thing that I created a long time ago, and I created this scale, and it's called the scale of life. I mean, excuse me, the scale of ambition, scale of ambition. And that scale of ambition helped me to focus in like a laser on the people that I needed. Now, we've talked about the people that you need in this business, attracting high quality people, all this and that. And the music to the ears message is part of that. But here's the thing. I had this uh, scale, it was on a scale of one to 10. It allowed me to go into this uh, meeting with this person and walk away with a definitive uh, idea of who I just talked to. Remember, I mentioned that we're doing an interview during the prospecting process. And what are we doing? We're asking questions. Remember I told you, hey, what do you do for a living? How many kids do you have? What do you like to do in your spare time? Why am I asking these questions? Because I'm getting a feel for who they are. I'm getting a feel to see if this person is the type of person I'm looking for. And they could fool me during the interview process, but they will eventually reveal themselves for what they are. I can only ask the questions and hope that they're being forthright with me in their answers, correct? 
So you say, what is this five into a 10? What this means is, is I'm walking away and I have that scale of ambition and I fill out that scale of ambition once I meet that person. Okay. And based on their answers, and I have a scale of one to 10, I know basically where this person's going to be on this scale. And this scale helps me, like I said, focus like a laser beam, folks. It helps me to focus in on the people I need because of the answers they gave me. And when I have their documentation, I write down on that scale what we talked about in that meeting, basically what their answers were, because people always are flattered. Oh, yeah, I remember you had three kids. Oh, yeah, you lead 300 people in the division and you work out of so-and-so city and so-and-so. They're blown away by that during the follow-up if it comes up. And I always have that sheet out in front of me during the follow-up process. And usually the follow-up process takes place on the phone. It rarely takes place in person. You don't want to slow down your prospecting process by meeting someone in person a second time during for the follow-up. Now, you can, but you don't have to. The reason you meet them in the first place is so they can see you. They can look you in the eyes. They can see your mannerisms. They can hear your voice. They can see the infl hear the fluctuations in your voice. All of that is going to what? Relay confidence. And they're going to be able to see your posture. They're going to say, hey, this person's serious. This person's focused. We talked about that. We don't need to go down that road. But here's the thing. When we talk about a five into a ten, if I walk away from them based on their answers, okay, and I say, well, this person's now on that scale, I got to tell you, I'm looking for people that are five and above because the people on five on and above uh, are the type of people I need to make my business go. What are those people? People that set goals and accomplish those goals. If they don't have a history of setting the goals and accomplishing those goals, there are five and below. And when we're talking about the scale of ambition, which we'll do a show on it because it's a powerful tool that you can use. No one else offers this. But here's the thing. I walk away. And if there are five, I cannot. I can't. When I walk away and I fill out the scale of ambition form. Guys, I cannot worry about changing a five into a 10. In other words, when I walk away and say, well, that's really a sharp person. But, man, they, they're falling way short of being a 10 and I got to focus on looking for what sevens, eights and nines. And when we talk about the scale of ambition, you're going to learn the importance of the scale of ambition. You're going to learn about the importance of the scale. You're going to learn about the importance and the value it's going to have in your business building process and how they will allow you to focus in on those leaders you're looking for. Cause if you pick up those sheets and you've marked that person a seven, eight or nine, cause you rarely is there a 10. I, you know, I've never done a 10, maybe once or twice, if I can remember that far back. But here's the thing. It is rare, rare, rare. My goal is not to find a 10. My goal is to get in the 7, 8, and 9 range. Will I take a 5 and a 6? Absolutely. But that's borderline. So if I run into a 5, even a 6, a borderline 6, unless they're a high 6, like a 6 plus, I cannot. There's nothing I can do. I can't say to myself, I'm going to work with this person. I'm going to turn them into a seven, eight or nine or a 10. Okay. And you say, well, why do you use the term five into a 10? Because you just said you never gave tens out. That's right. I don't. So right away, the reason that is said that way is so that you will not try to even do that. Don't shoot for a 10. It's rare. It's rare, rare, rare. I'm sure there's somebody in this world that is a 10, but don't look for them. But the thing is, you can't even turn them into a nine. You cannot turn them into an eight. You cannot turn them into a seven. Why not? Because they have to do it themselves. And you say, what does that mean? That means this, folks, that they have to grow. They have to realize that they have more growth to go. Let's give you an example. If they're uncomfortable talking to people, they're going to have to overcome that. If they really want this business, if they really want the lifestyle, they, they themselves have to overcome their uh, uneasiness, their uh, fear, uh, whatever the term may be for that individual about talking to other people. They may be introverted. They may be uh, lost for words, not good with words. They're going to have to decide 
what they're going to do. You know, am I going to improve? Am I going to get my confidence up where I can talk to people? I know I'm uneasy meeting people. Uh, I don't know this business well enough. I do like people. I don't mind meeting people. I don't mind talking to people, but I really don't know what to say. Even music to their ears message. I, I'm struggling with that and I haven't got it down pat yet. Well, you know what? They have to do what's necessary to improve themselves. And when they improve themselves, then a five becomes a six, a seven, eight, not on their own. This topic is don't you, you look in the mirror. The person staring back in the mirror is you do not take the responsibility unto your own shoulders to change a five into a 10. Folks, you can't do it. I'm telling you. How many times have you told your children, your co-workers, your subordinates, do this, don't do that. They walk away. Oh, I know better than them. I'm not going to listen to them. I'm going to do it this way. Okay. How many times has that happened throughout your life? Your kids say, well, mom and dad, they don't know nothing. They're old. Us young people, we know everything. We got the world by the tail. How many times have you heard that? How many times have you gone through that? They don't listen. Guess what? Your downline is not going to listen for the most part. That's the reason why when I was teaching you guys in past episodes about having leaders that are willing to listen, having leaders that are willing to learn, okay, they're already in that mindset. You know, they set and accomplish goals, but they realize the top-notch leaders realize I can't do it on my own. I have to learn. I have to be open to learning. I have to have mentors. Mentors means learning. That's not the uh, <laughs> actual uh, definition of it, but mentors, guess what? They teach. They show, okay? And when you have a mentor, that means you're ready to listen. You're ready to learn, okay? And a lot of your top performers in various fields and in life in general, yes, they're leaders and they take action. It's great, but there's a lot of leaders that take action and don't listen to anybody else. And they make huge mistakes and only affect themselves, but the project and other people as well. And sometimes it's not good. <laughs> you don't want to follow a leader that's blind. You don't want to follow a leader that's not willing to sit and listen and ask for input so that they can get uh, the information they need, okay, and asking for guidance and help. Well, guess what? When you have a person that's a five or six, they're not used to being that way, okay? So here we go. We got a situation where you now understand, okay, Rob says I cannot turn a five into a ten. You use the scale of ambition. And you ask the right questions. Remember, you're always in the prospecting process. You're doing what? You're interviewing, okay? You're not spilling. Uh, I'm with this great company that has a great product and it's proprietary. It came from Mars through the aliens and went to Venus and then Saturn. And then it was there for a thousand years. You know, all, you're not. And in and, and, and the leadership, uh, they've been around for a thousand years and they've been through 300 network marketing companies and they never make a mistake. They're the greatest leaders uh, car, uh, company owners uh, ever in network marketing and blah, blah, blah. I'm through this to impress this person who's just covered in information they could care less about. We've talked about that. Don't do that, right? <clears throat> what are you doing? You're doing an interview. Why are you doing an interview? So you can find out where they are on the scale of ambition so you can find out if this is someone that you need to get focused on. If this is someone that can really help your business, okay, it doesn't mean that you treat the people that are sevens, eights, and nines any different than you would a five in the follow-up. What it means is, is that when you're with that person, you give them your total undivided attention. If I'm talking to a five or a six, I know they're borderline, I'm still going to give them my undivided attention, but here's the difference. I know that it's on their shoulders to improve, Okay. And a lot of times they'll say themselves during the follow-up, look, I really like what's going on. I feel comfortable with you. I see real potential here, but I'm just not good at talking to people. I've never been that way. What are they doing? They're disqualifying themselves. They're identifying themselves as a five or a six. They may be successful. They may be an independent contractor with something to work from home or maybe do jobs out and about on their own because they're not comfortable to talk uh, talking to other people. They may do great work. They may make really good money, but that doesn't mean that they're great for this business. Okay, why? Because this business is about people. It's about 
communicating with people. It's about developing relationships with people. It's about teaching people, leading people. It's about people. Every one of those have the word people following them. Okay, so the thing is, is that you have to realize that what you bring to the table is totally different than what some people are accustomed to or comfortable with. And it doesn't mean that they're goofballs. It doesn't mean that they're losers. What it means is, is that it's a totally different business model that requires different talents and abilities and traits that they may not uh, have perfected yet or may not have developed yet. What you can't do, and the reason this scale is so important, and this is the whole point, what I'm getting ready to say, is you don't wait on those people. That's the power of using this scale. That's the power of knowing where these people are on that scale. Because during the follow-up, if I call her five or a six, I know right away I'm going to do the same follow-up with them that I do with a seven, eight, and nine. But here's the thing. I'm not going to wait on their decision. Why? Because they'll be, they'll take forever to make a decision because they're not comfortable with the thought of talking to someone. They're not comfortable with endorsing something. Okay. They don't know where they are themselves. Okay. And they're locked right where they are. Their feet are stuck in the mud and they're afraid to pull their feet out of the mud. They're waiting for somebody to come with a hose to wash the mud off their feet so they can move. Okay. Well, you can't be the one with the hose to wash it off because you what? When you focus on one person trying to turn that person from a five into a 10, you are going to miss out on what? The actual people that are sevens, eights, and nines. When you're out there screwing around trying to help this person go from a five to a 10, because you say to yourself, they're going to be great. They're going to be awesome. I just got to help them. Guess what? Rob's out there zeroing in on the sevens, eights, and nines, and I'm sponsoring people that you had on your list that you were going to talk to, but you haven't gotten to yet because you're wasting your time and your focus on a five or six trying to help those people, those poor people, to lift them up to become seven, eights, and nines. Folks, that's not how it works. That's the reason why you use a scale. That's the reason why the scale identifies where they are and you have a piece of paper, and when I get off the phone during the follow-up, I write down what that follow-up entailed, okay, and how we left. Remember, I always love and leave them. I don't never, I'm never mean to them. I never say, you you suck at this, you suck at that. That's not the point to, for the follow-up. It's, hey, okay, let me answer, answer your questions, and I answer their questions, and then I'll ask them, where are, where are they? You know, are you ready to go, or you still need time? Okay, I'm going during that follow-up process. My whole goal is to find out where they are so I can move on, okay? And so I'm going to ask pointed questions during that follow-up. As you know, you will do the same. But the thing is, is that I know once I hang up that phone and I write down, I write down the questions we had, I write down their answers, okay? And I write down whether they're a five or they moved up to a six or dropped to a four, and then I'll put them in my file cabinet. And if I ever hear from him again, because I'll tell him and say, well, it's obvious you're not ready. That's okay. That's cool. You know what? I'm here for you. If you have further questions, if you have uh, any concerns that you feel that you haven't got answers to, I'll be more than happy to answer them. I prefer that you email. Here's my email because I don't want them calling me because what am I using my phone for? Follow-ups with sevens, eights, and nines. I can answer emails later in the evening and I'll tell them I will answer your email, but it'll be later in the day in the evening sometimes. And the thing is, I kind of, you know, focus on I got a lot of follow ups to do and I got to focus on that. OK, so the thing is, we walk away from each other and, in, you know, love them and leave them atmosphere. Right. I answer their questions. Uh, we brought the process. Um, yeah, the prospecting, pro the follow up process. That's what I was looking for to a close. As far as I'm concerned, this case is closed because there are five or six. I can't think of them. I know that I can't take them to a seven, eight, and nine. They have to do that. So you see how that natural progression of asking questions and listening and understanding where they are in life and accepting, that's the key word, accepting where they are in their life at that moment and that they have work to do if they choose to pursue the lifestyle they want through this business model. Okay, do you see how that works? Okay, 
I'm sure that that's clear, right? <laughs> if, if you need to go back and listen to it again, do it, please go back and listen again. Okay. But that's question number one. What is it? Well, guess what? It is a gauge. We're using the scale of ambition as a gauge to do your pro uh, prospecting. And it allows, allows you to know where your prospect is on that scale. So you can focus in on the right people. And if there are five or six and you love them and you leave them and you hang up the phone and you keep that in your file cabinet, when you're going through your paperwork, what does that tell you? Okay. When you go through it, Hey, don't follow up with a person. Cause that's a five or a six. They haven't called you. Remember they move, you move. It's always a chess game. If you don't hear from them, you don't follow up with them. They'll follow up with you. Okay. And if you want to say, Hey, you get email them back once a month and say, hi, hi this is Rob just saying hi. And you want to do that? That's fine. That's not a follow-up. That's not trying to convince them. If you want to take the time to do that, that's awesome. But here's the thing. Remember, they move, you move. In this business, they move and you move. If they don't move, you're wasting your time. There's, I'm not saying you're wasting your time on a human fellow human being. That's not what I'm saying at all. I am saying that you're wasting your time in the business building process, focusing in on a five or a six that will never turn into a seven or eight or nine unless they do it on their own. OK, do you understand? Do you see where this is helping you focus in? So when you're doing your follow ups, what are you going to focus in on? The sevens, eights and nines. What are you going to do with the five and sixes? You're going to put them in a different pile and you're going to say, I may call. I mean, I may email them once in a while and, or text them it's up to you. But don't call them. OK, because it turns into a social call and you're going to teach them the wrong thing if they ever turn in, if they ever decide to join this business. Doesn't hurt. Send a text message. Doesn't hurt. Send an email. Hi, this is Rob. I was just checking in. Um, see how you're doing and leave it at that. OK, just be human. All right. Question number two is how does it work? OK, now we talked about the prospecting aspect. How you? OK, but how does it work? This is where it really applies. OK, so question two is still appropriate, even though we covered a lot. In question one, question one was about the prospecting process. We're going to make a definitive line. We're going to draw that line in the sand right now so that you know that question two is different than question one. Here's why. Question two is how does it work? Well, the five into a 10 works in your downline as well. And you go, what? What, Rob? What are you talking about? What do you mean it works in your downline as well? Here's what I'm saying. Look, guys, there are going to be people that are going to fool you during the business building process. OK, I mean, excuse me, the prospecting process. I apologize. <laughs> I got into myself a little bit. And so what you're going to have is you're going to have a situation where somebody's going to get through the fence and they're going to uh, uh, fool you thinking that you have a seven or an eight here instead of a five or a six. That's going to happen. I don't care how good you are. But here's the thing. When the rubber meets the road, in other words, the business building process starts, that's where the, the pretenders that are at the seven and eight level will drop down to where they actually are and actually who they are. And that is a five or six and maybe even lower a four or five. It all is a filtering process. You let that filtering process play out on its own. And what does that mean during the business building process? Here's what it means. It means that the people that are not uh, doing the work, okay? In other words, you've laid it out. Five simple steps, you know, music theory, CC, BBA, all that stuff. Here's the thing. If they're not doing those steps, what do they identify themselves as? They're not a seven, eight, and nine because those people are actually doing it. They may be making mistakes in the five simple steps. They may be making mistakes in the CC, BBA, but here's the thing. They're doing it. And they're getting better at it and they're trying to improve on it. OK, and you help those people because they're doing what they moved first by doing what? By this, doing the CCBBA and the five simple steps. OK, so they moved first. So what is your goal to be there for them? Because you move after they move, which means, hey, I see you're struggling. What do you need help with? Hey, I see you're doing pretty good. Are you OK? Is there anything I can help you with? OK. When you log into your office and you see what they're doing, because if they're at the same volume level and there's been no pin rank advancement, which we'll talk about another day, 
The bottom line is, is that you know, okay, they've run into a roadblock. Something's going on. They're either sidetracked uh, and they're not doing the business because something's going on in their life or they're stuck. They don't know what next step to take. Uh, or maybe they're focusing in on one person. So you can touch base with them and say, hey, I see that things kind of slowed down a little bit. Are you okay? Is there anything you need help with? Uh, you need any input? I'm here for you. Okay, so that's what you do, but we'll talk about that another day. But here's the thing. If those people are out there and they're making mistakes and they're trying to do the CCBBA, they're doing the five simple steps and they're, and they're making a few mistakes on the way, you have a what? A seven, eight, or nine. But if you have somebody that's out there and they're kind of like, well, I'll, I'll do a couple days this week and then maybe next week I'll do three days of work and I'll do an hour here and then I'll do two hours there. Folks, that's a five or a six. So what is that? What have they done? They've identified themselves as a four, five or a six by what? Their activity. And if they don't contact you and say, hey, I need help. I'm confused. I'm totally lost then what does that tell you? Okay, that there are four or five or six and that they're just playing around. Do you contact that person? Okay, you can, once again, you can send an email through your back office, whatever, a text message, whatever, and say, hey, I see that you're struggling. Do you need more help? Do you need more guidance? Reach out to them as a fellow human being, as a business partner and say, hey, I'm here for you. You can do that with a four, five, and six, but see what they do. If they don't reply to you, if they do reply to you in a kind of a smirky way or whatever, then guess what? They will further prove that there are four or five or six. And what do you do with a four or five or six? You can't turn them into a 10. So you don't try. What your job is as a leader is to reach out as a fellow human being, as a business partner, as a leader, and say, hey, I see you're struggling. Do you need help? If they don't reply or if they do in a smirky way or if they say, no, I'm fine, then guess what? There are four, five, or six. They're building the business at their pace, at their level. They're not serious about it. They told you they were when they were in the prospecting process and you signed them up thinking they were a seven, eight, or nine, but now their true colors are coming out and they're actually a four, five, or six. And because of their lack of activity, they are identifying who they really are. So what do you do? You don't try to turn them. You don't call them. You don't hound them. You don't beat them over the head. You don't chase them with a broom. You don't drag them across the finish line. You don't do any of that. What do you do? You focus on the sevens, eights, and nines that are actually doing something, even though they're making mistakes, they're actually out there doing it. And you see progress. Those are the people you touch base with on a regular basis Okay, whether it's one time a week, we talk about that when you say, hey, you, how do you work with leaders, which is important. You, through communication, proper communication, you find out how often you, they want you to touch base with them, and you do it, your sevens, eights, and nines. Okay, because those are the people that are going to build a large business, which is going to support your lifestyle and, and create the income that uh, you can live off of for that lifestyle, right? So the thing is, is that you have to focus in on what? The sevens, eights, and nines. You don't want to worry about the four, five, and sixes. They have growth to go through, okay? They fooled you during the prospecting process that they, in fact, had these traits, and those traits do transfer over. But when once again, guys, you got to realize it's action that speaks the loudest, Okay. They'll tell you, and they may actually be a leader of people. They may actually set goals and achieve those goals, but it doesn't mean they'll do it in this business. Remember, I've told you stories about where I have sponsored people, and I've been on both sides of the fence here. When I would came, when I was uh, first sponsored in the industry, I was a sharp young man in the military. You got to have goals, and you got to be, uh, you know, based on what you're doing in the military, you can't be screwing around. But here's the thing: that business model threw me for a loop. It wasn't, I, I was a little bit intimidated. Remember, I was an introvert. I was a little bit, I didn't fully understand the business model. Even though I wanted to do it, yes, I wanted the lifestyle. And I wish I could say I went game busters in the beginning. I did okay. I overcame those fears. I literally jumped in with both feet, but I was still apprehensive. So I wasn't a seven or eight or nine at that time. Okay. But I grew into it. And I grew into it because I wanted the lifestyle so bad, not because anybody beat me over the head, not because somebody said you do it or else, nothing like that. I wanted to learn. I love to learn. 
So that was inherent within me. But the thing is, I wanted this lifestyle and I saw where this business model had the potential to provide that lifestyle for me. I knew I couldn't get in any other way. So the thing is, is that I went out there and did it and improved myself and turned myself in from a four or five or a six into a seven, eight or nine to the point where other people were offering me thousands upon thousands and thousands of dollars to come into their business because they knew I could build a business quickly. Okay. They knew I was a, a recruiter or a, a prospector or a machine, whatever you want to call it. So the thing is, is that I had transformed myself from a five into a seven, eight or nine and continue to get better, but they didn't change me. And my sponsors did the right thing at that time. They didn't chase me. They didn't call and say, get your butt to work. Hey, you're great. You're awesome. You can do this. Okay. They didn't do that. What they, you know what they did? They set the pace. And you know what they did? They invited me over to their house so that I could see their lifestyle. They invited me a few other places so I could absorb what it was they were doing, which was mostly the lifestyle. Okay. And because I saw the lifestyle was real. And even when I was around them, they didn't beat me over the head. Every once in a while, they say, Rob, you can do this. This is, you know, it gets easier. You'll be fine. Okay. And that's all they would say. Okay. And I saw the lifestyle. I said, the lifestyle is, is, is real. These people are actually living like this. And uh, I got to see the, the product. Um, I got to see how the, everything worked. And my confidence grew in the business model, which forced me within myself to what? Make a decision. And what? To get better. Okay. So that it, the only way a five turns into a 10 is on their own initiative. It's not anything you do. So when your business builders, your business is growing, you've learned to identify and work with your leaders. We've talked about that. If you're not familiar with the time back, go back and listen to that episode. But here's the thing. That five into a 10 applies to your organization as well. It's not just during the prospecting process. And the scale of ambition is only used during the prospecting process. You don't have to use it. You can during once they're in your business. Okay. But the thing is, is that you want to have a file and all your leaders because when you can't keep all that knowledge in your head. So if you're going to have a call with them, at least you have a folder and you know how many kids they have, you know what their lights are, you know, all this and that people are impressed when you know that information, they're like, well, they really do care about me. And they know they remember all this information and you put all that stuff down. If you want to continue to use the scale of ambition, put it in their folder as they grow as a leader in your business, that's totally up to you. That's awesome. But once again, turning a five into a 10, in your organization, you have a group of leaders. If you have 20 leaders and you have four or five of them that are fours, five and sixes on the scale of ambition, you don't do what? You don't try to horse whip them. You don't try to make them into a 10. OK, that is as simple as I can make it. All right. This really does not apply to your super leaders, the guys that go into the legacy business uh, category or the really big business, uh, the, you know, they are an eight or a nine. And they, in, in your mind, they may be a 10. You're the one that determines whether okay. everybody has their different guidelines. I don't pass out a 10 easily. Okay. I believe there's just too many things that have to be in place for someone to be a 10, but that's neither here nor there. That's not the goal of the scale of ambition is for you to sponsor as many 10s or have as many 10s as possible in your business. So don't use it that way. You'll drive yourself crazy and, and you'll have a negative look, outlook on all the leaders that are doing things. Those leaders that are sevens, eights and nines, you'll kind of, well, you're not a 10. You need to work harder. You know, that's bull crap. Get away from that. That's total bull. That's not what this is about. A five into a 10 is saying, look, you cannot, as a leader, focus on the people that are four, five, and sixes. Allow them to grow at their own pace. You focus on the sevens, eights, and nines. That's the power of the scale of ambition, but that's the power of knowing the five into a 10 so that you can become a focused business building machine yourself. And once you do get your 90 day mini blast over and you get your business where you want it, then you still use the five into a 10 because why? 
because your organization is still growing. You become a figurehead and there's leaders in depth and some of maybe even your leaders on your front line, they're still growing. And so you have to maintain that mentality of five into a 10 because you can't force them to be what they're not at this point in their life. What you have to do is be there when they're ready. When I was ready, when I transformed from a four, five, or six, whatever I was, okay, and I'm pretty hard on myself. I think it was a four or five, okay? I had the talents. I had the abilities, okay? But I really didn't have the direction. I really didn't have the understanding, and I really didn't feel comfortable talking to people because, once again, I was an introverted person, okay? So I had a lot of growth to go through. Even though I was I was excelling in the military as a leader, okay, and people naturally came to me. I was always a leader, whether it was on the uh, basketball court, the football field, the softball field, uh, was not in baseball. <laughs> I sucked at baseball. I sucked at soccer, too. But the other ones, the thing is, is that I, I was one of the best out there, and people gravitated to me. And same, people have always gravitated to me. Uh, the thing is, is that when I got in the network marketing field, I was totally out of my element, okay? And the thing is, I changed. I don't want to keep rehashing that, but I give you that example because I want you to realize the great difference between you letting the fours, five, and sixes be themselves and you focus on the sevens, eights, and nines. Jim Rome is the one that brought this up. I created the scale of ambition, okay, because it helped me to have a piece of paper and I had focus, okay, and I had a piece of paper that allowed me to focus in on the right people. Okay, and identify the right people to talk to, to follow up with, okay, and to get excited about, okay? I didn't treat them any different. I'm telling you I didn't. But the thing is, Jim Rome said, he, uh, and he was using an example. I, mean, I was listening to one of his cinem- seminars, and he said this, and I wish, I, I hope I can get it right, but I don't think I'm going to. But he said, he said, uh, oh, a friend of his, a mentor, told him, said, Jim, Don't try to change a five into a 10. And Jim said in in his own way, you know how unique that voice is and his delivery. And he said, he said, I got it. He said, I finally understood. I couldn't change a five into a 10. I had to accept the five for what it was. I had to accept the six for what they were. I couldn't go out and drag them across the finish line. I had to love them and accept them for who they were. And I had to focus on the other people. Folks, it's no different here. That story, that motivated me to create the scale of ambition because I needed a visual, a document that would help me to have that laser focus. I couldn't remember all the stuff. I had a regular job, I had a family. I couldn't afford to store all that in my head. I had other more important stuff that I had to focus on. This paper allowed me to focus in on those people because I had written the information down. I had written down and had a folder on those people and I knew where they were on the scale of ambition. I knew they had real talents, real abilities. And if they chose to join me in my business and we became business partners, I knew that I had a seven, eight or nine. And I always told you guys, And when you're working with leaders, what do I tell you? They will leave if they don't feel like they're not getting the support and the leadership and the guidance they need to succeed. Okay. So if you don't focus in on them, what are you doing? You're putting your business in jeopardy. Okay. You're putting, you're allowing erosion to take place in the foundation, the business foundation that you've worked so hard to put into place. You see what I'm saying? You see the importance of this? So the sevens, eights, and nines, because you have it written down on paper, because you have it in their folder, you know who they are, you know what they're doing, you can log in the back office, and the paperwork you have reinforces what you're seeing in your back office, that you have a leader, you better focus in on them, and that means you've got to leave the fours, five, and sixes to do what? To be themselves, like Jim Rohn said. Accept them and love them for who they are. If they want to move up to big league, they'll call you, they'll contact you, Okay, and when they do, you have to put them on the spot right then. You have to say, hey, this is great. Love hearing from you. I think you got real ability here. I think you have real talent and real future. We need to get started right away. And if they balk at that, then once again, they're fooling you. Okay, they're trying to convince themselves that they're going to take action. And part of taking action is contact you. That's wasting your time. You have to 
put them on the spot right away and say, great, I love hearing from you. You, you can do this business. You have the ability. Let's get started right now. Okay. And if they, once again, if they balk at that, then guess what? You know that they're fooling you and they're dropping even further down the list. You know, they're going from a four to three, whatever. Okay. And then you, you document that too. You feel, if you feel they drop from a five to a four or three, what does that tell you? And you got to tell them, hey, called me up on so-and-so date at so-and-so time and said this and would not commit to uh, setting up a firm game plan to take action immediately uh, or take immediate action. So the point is, you see what I'm doing? I'm identifying and I know who to stay away from. I know who not to waste my time with because I got to focus in on who. That's the reason why a lot of times the downline people that you'll hear these horror stories uh, and I call them horror stories because they are, if they're, tr if they're true, if they're true, a lot of times they're not. See, here's what happens. You're the leader of your organization. You're focused on the sevens, eights, and nines. You're taught to stay away from the three, fours, fives, and sixes. Why? Because they'll drain your energy. They'll drain all your positive energies, uh, and, and you won't have anything left for your uh, real leaders. Also, the, your focus will go away from your real leaders to what? So those people that will never do anything, they say they will, and they'll take one small step and then another one a week later and then another one. That's not a leader, okay? They're wasting your time. They're wasting your focus and your energy, okay? So the bottom line is, is that you got to do what? You, as a leader, got to make a decision. When you make that decision, you're going to piss these other people off that are three, fours, and five, and sixes, and you know what they're going to say? They're going to say to someone else, that doesn't know any better, that doesn't know the business model all that well, and certainly doesn't know you all that well. And they'll say, well, I had a leader and he wouldn't help me. I had a leader I called two, three times and I told them I was ready to go and they wouldn't help me. You know what? They don't even return my call. I, could, I emailed them and I called them. They wouldn't do anything. Okay. Why do you think those people do that? It's because they know that you're not a seven, eight or nine and that you're not willing to take action. Remember, I told you, even your sevens, eights, and nines are at least out there making mistakes while they're trying to build a business, but at least they're doing it. They're moving first, which means you move second when they need you to move second, right? You're willing and able to do it right away. That's how it's supposed to work. So these other people that are threes, fours, fives, sixes are mad and upset because they're not, they feel they're not getting the support and guidance and the help. And I've had people actually say, well, you're my sponsor. You're supposed to help me. You're supposed to uh, make me better. You're supposed to uh, help me get to my goals. And you have to tell them, no, this is your business. You set your goals and you have to do what you have to do to reach those goals. There's nothing that says that I'm supposed to help uh, you hand, hold your hand and walk every step with you to get to your goals. Yes, I'm here. But you have to take the first step. And the first step is you have to commit to taking action, correct action, CCBBA. If you're not willing to do that and you need to use the five simple steps and if you're not willing to do that on a consistent basis, I can't help you. You have to do your part first and then I can help you. If you're not doing that, I can't do anything for you. I can't do it for you. I'm not going to make the calls for you. I'm not going to hold your hand. Yes, I will work with you but I will not hold your hand. I will not drag you across the finish line. There's no way. That's not what this is about. This is your business, and there's no obligation on my part to make your business a success. You will run into those people, and when they get that kind of answer, and it's clearly defined, in other words, you made it clear, just like I told you right now with those words, where you stand and it's they get mad and they go out telling other people on forums and everything else, whoever will listen, they're going to bitch and complain that you weren't there for them, right? So there you go. <laughs> okay, that was question number two. Question number three for the podcast, folks. How does it affect me and my business? I'll tell you how it affects you and your business. Do you want the lifestyle that you have set on, uh, as one of your goals? Do you want the money? Do you want the residual income machine that spits out money month after month after month that will support the lifestyle that you want? If that is the case, then this is going to have a big impact on you. This five into a 10, as you can see by the examples I've already given, is going to have a huge impact. Why? How? Okay. I'll tell you why and how. Why is because you, if you, once again, focus on the threes, fours, fives, and sixes, 
You're wasting your time with the wrong people that are not going to create the volume that you need to get the money that you need to live the lifestyle you want. All right. So that affects you directly as an individual. That's how it affects you. OK, because part of that question of number three is how does it affect me? I just told you how it affects you. If you don't use the scale of ambition correctly and if you don't, if you try to change a five into a 10, which you don't want to do, it has a direct impact on you. OK, and it's going to hurt your volume. It's going to hurt your other leaders because you're focusing on the wrong people. That has a direct impact on you because your paycheck's going to suffer. Your growth in your business is going to suffer. And it's all negative. You can't afford to do that. This is one of the things you have to be absolutely scared of. You do not turn a five into a 10. You don't do it. OK, and it should be a golden rule on your part. Don't ever try to do that. Don't be mean to people. You just got to be firm and you just got to draw the line in the sand. And I've told you with, with the words, I'd be all kinds of golden gems during the examples that we just talked about. The reason why some of our podcasts go as long as they do, because they give you these golden nuggets of information through these examples so that you can understand clearly what's going on here, how it, how you to use the things we teach you and how they affect you and your business. So hopefully you've you caught some of those golden nuggets that I shared with you earlier. If not, once again, please go back and watch them. I mean, uh, listen to this and uh, or, you know, if you're listening to the recording, just scroll through and find it. OK, now here, how does it affect your business? I'm going to tell you how it affects your business. If you're focusing on the wrong people and you're trying to turn those five because you say, well, I already got uh, 15 growing leaders that are good on their own. I don't need to focus on those guys. I'm going to be there for them if they contact me. But now I'm going to focus on dragging these guys across the line. I'm going to tell you how it affects your business. You're going to lose out on money. You're going to cause a slowdown in your momentum. One of the hardest things to create in this business. And once you let that momentum slow down to a certain point, and I don't know what that point is. Nobody knows. Everybody's business is different. It is almost next to impossible to recreate that momentum. God, you cannot afford to do that. You should be scared to death of this tactic. There's a reason why I tell you guys these things. You're not going to learn this stuff anyplace else. I'm telling you, if you do this, you're going to slow down your momentum. You're going to hurt your business, and it may not recover. That should scare the crap out of you because you worked your tail end off to get it where it is. You're pushing that money ball with the help of your other leaders up that hill. And you may be almost at the peak and you don't know it yet. And the thing is, is you're going to slow down for a four, five or six because you want to be a nice person and a helpful leader. Well, good luck with that. OK, let me know how it works out for you because you're going to be focused on the wrong people trying to transform them into a, uh, a four or five and a six into a seven, eight or not. It ain't going to happen. Can you recommend to those people if they contact you and said, well, what can I read? What can I do? You know what? Yes, you can supply that information. That's not taking your focus away from your leaders to help them with a golden nugget. Hey, go to YouTube. Listen to Jim Rohn. Listen to uh, um, some people like Tony Robbins. Some people like Jim Rohn, uh, Zig Ziglar. I'm leaving a uh, Dan. Yeah, not, uh, I have a bunch. I mean, they're all uh, one of the greats of all time. Og Magdino. Uh, one of my favorites, as Zig Ziglar is one of my favorites. Jim Rohn's one of my favorites. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, uh, there's a lot of great things on YouTube. You can buy programs on eBay that uh, those are um, leaders, motivators, whatever you want to call them, put out. Okay. The thing is, is get exposed to that information. Okay. And that's what you tell them. And when they contact you, Rob, what can I do? I realize that I've been kind of screwing off and, and it does scare me a little bit. And I don't feel comfortable talking. What can I do to improve? You know what? I'm going to tell them exactly what I just told you. Hey, uh, you know, a lady or a guy, go to YouTube. Look for Jim Rome, Zig Ziglar, all the following, Og Magneto. I'm telling you, if you go and listen to those things, that's going to help you move forward. And, you know, it seems real simple. Don't miss a day. You know, become a fan of theirs. Gobble up what they're teaching you. I'm telling you, if you do that, you are going to change as a person. And if you change then maybe that change is going to help you go forward in this business. Okay. Yes. I'm going to do that for them. That's what I'm there for, but I'm not going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here for you. Yeah. I'll drag you across. Yeah. I'll do, you know, I'm not even going to do three ways with them. Why? Because they haven't moved first when they say, well, I want to do a three way. Okay. We'll call them and set it up. Well, I don't know how to do that. Well, I'll, I'll tell you how to do it. Okay. Now do it. 
well, I don't know. I'll, I'll try and do it this afternoon. And then I never hear from them because they're afraid to call that person and set up a three-way because they don't know what to say to them. Okay. Did they move first? No. Just because they called me doesn't mean they moved first. They called me. I replied. I told them what they need to do. When I say they move first and you move second, that means that they have to move first in a business building method. Okay. In order for me to meet them. Okay. I can't help them if they don't. Yeah, they can call me. But then those calls end up being social calls and that wastes your time. And it's such a horrible example. You can't do that. You know, a lot of people say, oh, those leaders are so cold and they're so impersonal. No, it's because we understand what it takes to make this business go. We cannot afford to have social calls or a, a business calls turn into social calls because it sets a terrible precedent that if you decide to build this business, you're going to do the same thing, which slows down your momentum because you're not doing what? using speed and urgency to get through your business and through your prospects, which creates the momentum and the excitement and the success stories, which helps push that money ball up the hill. All because you're trying to turn a five into a 10. Guys, it ain't going to happen. Okay. They turn themselves into a six, seven or eight. Okay. Just like I did. And just like thousands of others, maybe even millions of other people have. How many people have come into this business model as a meek individual and left as a strong leader. I know that I'm one of those people, and I know that there were plenty of others in my business, and there were plenty of others and other uh, people that I knew in the industry that they had people that did that. Okay, sometimes you wake up a sleeping giant in this uh, business model, and sometimes the giants in the regular business world fall flat on their face. I told you about that. We're not going to go down that path. That happens. You don't know who's going to be your leader. Okay. And, you, and you'll, you're probably saying, well, that means you should work with a four or five or six. No, that's not what I'm saying. No, the people that identify themselves as seven and eights or nines are people, when you say, okay, I signed you up, here's the game plan, let's get started. And they say, okay, let's go. Okay, well, here's what you need to do. Okay, well, this is what we need to do. I'm there. And you know what? They go out and they do it. They move first and then I meet them. Okay. They did the right thing. They got started right away. They said, Rob, what do I do? How do I do it? Not a problem. Let's start it today. Let's go. And they go from day one, bam, and they go. They may make mistakes along the way. They may not be as consistent as they need to be in the beginning. But as weeks go by, they get better at it. They get better at it. They get better at it. And this thing you know, they don't need your help. They have full grasp what they're supposed to do. Their confidence is up. And they know how to make this business go now. And they're and then I have to be there for them when they need me. Okay. But their actions meant that they took action first. So if they were four or five, six weeks into the business building process and they get a hold of me, okay, do I answer? Yes, because they're one of my leaders. They're a, a seven, eight, or a nine through shown through their activity. And because they are active and they're taking action. That means they've moved first, okay, because they're doing what? They're doing CCBBA, which means they're taking business building activity each and every day, okay, which means that I'm there for them, and when they contact me, I immediately focus on them because they're one of my sevens, eights, or nines, right, because of their activity, okay, not because of the words out of their mouth. So that is how they moved first. That means when they contact me, I move. Okay. If a person that's new and they're a four or five or six and they're like balking on the first day, no, no, I, I got to do this and I got to do that. I can't do that tomorrow. And then two or three days go by. They didn't move first. They haven't taken any business building activity, which means they didn't move first. So I'm not going to be there for them. And once again, I'm not going to call them up and beat them over the head. So the thing is, is that you have to realize this five into a 10 will affect your business. It will help you will and I'm telling you, if your momentum slows down, the chances of getting that momentum back is slim to none in this business model. You cannot afford for that to happen. You're going to just have thick skin if you're some of your four, five, and sixes are getting on forums and knocking you or contacting other people in your business, which you got to put a stop to. We'll talk about another day. But you cannot have them out there spreading. Uh, things in your business. That's wrong. It's your business. But the thing is, is that they're going to bitch and they're going to complain that you're not there helping them. You're not being a true leader. You're not doing this and that. And uh, not everybody in your downline is going to understand what I'm teaching you guys right now. That's a power of having access to videos like this 
okay, in our training in our members area because you're going to be able to send your downline to learn this information so they can be on the same page as you and they can say, oh, I now understand why Rob uh, comes comes across as being businesslike and, and is not as personable. Look, I like having fun like anybody else. And when I get out amongst my other leaders, we have fun. You know, we let our hair down a little bit. That doesn't mean we go out and go crazy partying, although I do like my dreams. <laughs> I do like laughing and having a good time. That's not the point. The point is, is that when it's business, it's business. When you go into work every day, you don't take a drink with you. You don't sit around and let your hair down there. You've got a to-do list when you go into work. You have to get things done. That company depends on you. Your paycheck depends on you doing your to-do list and being proficient and productive. OK, so that company can make money and that way they can pay you. If you're not doing that, guess what? They're going to get rid of you, and replace you with somebody that will. So if you can't do it in your job, why would you do it in your business? Right. You have to be professional. Can you have inappropriate uh, relationships? And I don't mean sexual uh, at work. In other words, favoring one person over another, giving one person more you know, job bennies like an extra break time or extra bathroom times, whatever the case may be, than other people. No, because that's going to ruin the morale. It's going to separate uh, people in your um, office area and stuff. It's going to cause real dissension, and people are going to get a negative uh, attitude towards you because you are showing favoritism. What do you think is going to happen in your business? Okay. So these people are going to automatically, the four, five, and six, and they're going to be upset because they think you're showing favoritism. You have to have thick skin, and you cannot turn a five into a ten. It does, in fact, play into this. So when you as a leader are building a business and it's getting successful, you're going to have the same challenges as you do in any other business. That's the reason why this is a business, and you cannot show favoritism by focusing in on the four, fives, and sixes and leaving the seven, eights, and nines to fend for themselves, even though they're doing well. If you do, once again, you're setting the wrong precedent and you're wasting your valuable time. Here's the last thing of how it affects your business. And then we'll close it out. Here's the thing. You're, you got leaders going. Your business is rolling. You say, screw it. I don't care if it Rob's wrong. It's not going to hurt my momentum. I'm going to focus. I'm going to help these people that were four or fives and sixes because this is part of my second third. Remember, remember the one third, one third, one third. One third will do it now. One third will do it later. One third will never do it. The second one third, always remember, they got to move first. It's a chess game. Always, 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 always in this business model. They move first. How do they move first? By doing business building activity. Contacting you saying, I'm ready to get started is not moving first. Yes, it is the first move, but the rubber meets the road when you say, okay, that's great. I'm glad to have you. You have the ability to do this and be really special in this business. Here, let's set the game plan and get it started now. And if they balk at that, they're not ready. They're not. They're still a four, five, or six. Okay. They didn't make the first move. The first move is when they take business building activity steps. So anyway, if you here's how it's going to affect your business. You say, well, no, screw it. Rob's wrong. It's not going to hurt my momentum. I am going to focus on these guys. I'm going to turn those guys into, a, uh, you know, from a four, five, or six into a seven or eight or nine. I'm going to work my tail end off. And I'm going to do that because they're already in my business and they're part of my second, third. They're the ones that are come around later. They just need help and guidance and motivation. I'm going to do that because I'm really good at that and I'm going to do it. OK, you just fooled yourself. You put yourself down a path that could be disastrous. But that's fine. Let's just talk about the simple part of what this is going to affect. You know, you, you say that you're leaders, you got 12, 15 leaders that are on their own. They don't hardly contact you. You log in your back office. They're doing well. And you think, OK, that's great. That's fantastic. You know, if this is making sense, give me thumbs up. You know, we always ask you guys for thumbs up comments. We love to get feedback. This is one of the better shows. It's chock full of great information. But here's the, the we're going to bring it to a close with this last point. When you are focused on the four, five, and sixes because you're convinced the part of your second, third, the ones that come around later, guess what? You're missing out on sponsoring more sevens, eights, and nines. Somebody else is sponsoring those into their business, whether it's with your company or another company. They, somebody in Amway could be sponsoring the people that are on your list that are actually sevens, eights, and nines. Okay. And so your business is not going to grow and it's going to start to slow down and stagnate because you're trying really hard 
to convince these four, five, and sixes that they can be sevens, eights, and nines, and you're bound to determine to make it work because they're part of your second, third. That's not how the second, third works. You're making a huge mistake. Look, your job is to what? Sponsor as many people as quickly as possible. This is the power of the 90-day goals list. If you say you want to have X amount of leaders in your business by that time frame, and you don't have that many leaders, you've got them coming on, but they're not quote unquote there yet. You need to keep sponsoring more people, which means you're going to what? Use a scale of ambition to look for more sevens, eights, and nines. You're not going to focus on the four, five, and sixes who are going to add very little volume at all. You're going to focus on somebody that's going to bring a lot of volume or maybe a group of new people that's going to bring a lot of volume into your business on top of the volume that's already being created by your active leaders. See, that's what you want to do. And you can do that if you don't focus on turning the four, five, and sixes into sevens, eights, and nines. Okay. But if you're convinced that those four, fives, and sixes make up your, your uh, second wave of the one third, then go ahead. Good luck. That's all I got to say. Because you're going to hurt your business. Uh, you look, the business model does its thing. And I always tell you guys, it doesn't care who you are, what you are, what you've achieved in the past. It don't care. If you don't work it right, it's not going to work. And people always say, well, how does this business work? Well, I'm telling you guys how it works. And this is one of those hidden topics, one of those hidden gems that you will not learn about anyplace else. You cannot turn a five into a 10. You have to accept it for what it is. Or who they are. And remember, I just told you that Jim Rohn quote, you know, and Jim Rohn even said, I tried. I tried to turn fives into tens and it about killed me. And you, if you are familiar, if you're a Jim Rohn fan, you know what I'm talking about. And I laughed my butt off. He said, about killed me. He said, I had to learn to accept the fives for what they were and let them be the best fives they can be. That was one of the great lines, too. And it's true, folks. You've got to let people be who they are at that moment in their life and accept them for what they are and let them be the best five, the best six, the best uh, four that they can be. And then you focus on what? Being the best leader you can be. And that means you work with other leaders that are actually taking steps. And that steps are the five simple steps in the CCBBA. It's got to be those two things in order for them to get your attention. If they're not doing it, then they don't deserve your attention. And that's the truth. They have to earn your attention. Why do you think people flock to leaders when they go to these events and stuff? It's because they don't get the chance to correspond with these people. They're almost like Bigfoot. They hear about Rob, but they don't really get a chance to hear or see Rob. So the only time they get around Rob and they say, oh my gosh, there's Rob at an event and they come over and introduce themselves and I'm a big fan or I really like what you teach or, hey, I really admire what you've done. That's how those people uh, uh, become a fan, if you will. And a lot of people go to those events just to be fans, just to meet Robs, if you will, okay, because they have no other way of meeting Rob. And additionally, um, they enjoy the camaraderie that comes into this business model. OK, and they like being around other people. Uh, there have been people that I've known for years that have bought product month after month for years just so that they can go to the events because they love the events so much and the people at the events, which is they're right. I mean, I totally get that. It is intoxicating and it is fun because you're around other like minded people and they never have any intention of building a business. They just love being the best customer they can be. Well, guess what? Embrace them, love them. That's fine. That's awesome. You know, give them a fist bump. Yeah, that's awesome. We love having you here. We love seeing you here. I have my business that bought one product a month. I, I treated them as though they were ordering a thousand products a month. And that's no joke. I'd look them right in the eye and shake their hand and say, thank you so much for being a part of my business and for being here. I love having people like you. Every point counts. Every person counts. And it's really the other way around. Every person counts and every point counts. And I really don't even like bringing up the point <clears throat> because that person's getting value out of that meeting or that event outside of any product or points. OK, and I'm not so greedy that that one product means a whole lot to me, but it means a lot to them. 
because that product and those points are there. They feel in their mind they're being productive and that they're doing their part. And it's as, just as important as anything else. And they're right. That's the reason why I bring that point up. <clears throat> I just wanted to verbalize it correctly <laughs> and so that you guys understood it. So hopefully this makes sense. Number Question number three, how does it affect me? I told you how I did that. How does it affect my business? I just told you, you know, slow down your momentum. You'll focus on the wrong set of people. Uh, you got to do what? You got to move forward looking for more sevens, eights, and nines. If your leaders are already established and they're working and they hardly contact you and you're kind of in the cruise mode yourself as a leader, what does that tell you? Get your butt out and look for more sevens, eights, and nines. Using what? The scale of ambition, which we will talk about in a future episode. We may talk about it tomorrow. Matter of fact, it's probably a good topic for tomorrow, right? I can move the other topics around. I make a list every Sunday on what I'm going to talk about this week. But what better way to segue into the scale of ambition, right? And I'll make I'll uh, I'll uh, address that tomorrow. And you guys, I mean, I don't know what we could talk about because I covered a lot of it today, <laughs> right? So I don't know. We'll let you know to be a surprise tomorrow because <laughs> I don't want to rehash what we just went over here. All right. But uh, there is more details to the scale of ambition that I had didn't I have not covered here. So with that being said, I try so hard to get done by an hour. I am so sorry, guys. But as you can tell, this is important information. Uh, I always feel this thing full of facts for you guys. I always feel it full of information that you absolutely positively have to know in order for you to have a realistic chance to do something special in this business model. And so that you can make 2020 your best year ever. And that's what we do here. Don't forget, please go to our various platforms and put in hashtag the MLM solution. Look for us, follow us, share our postings, share our information, help make the better wor the world a better place um, by doing something positive. And you can do that uh, by sharing this information with other, other fellow network marketers across the world who may be struggling themselves and looking for direction. What better way to do it than to do uh, the share our information? You guys have been around long enough. This is going into our fourth week. And uh, we've been around long enough now that you guys understand that we're honest, we're truthful, we teach the basics. This is stuff you can sink your teeth into, things you can utilize right away to make a huge difference in your business. And that's what we want to do. So please go and share our information. Help us get the word out. Uh, we, I am very surprised and humbled. I say it every week, but I mean it. You guys have humbled me by the fact I, I look at the numbers. And the number of people that are sharing stuff and things like that is just really surprising and humbling. And and um, I, I love to see it. And I thank you guys. I can never say thank you enough. This is a team thing. I can't do this on my own. So there has to be an audience. And I always feel there is an audience. And I just want to continue to work to get it, the word out there. And I need your help in doing that. As you know, we have the MLMSolution.net. I was working on the website this weekend. I got a lot of hours in yesterday on it. I'm going to put some more time in it uh, over the next couple of days. It can be a real challenge, as I told you guys, because of the platform I'm using, which I'm not happy about, but it is working for the time being. As this thing continues to grow, I will change platforms into a more efficient uh, platform. So bear with me if you find some problems on the website. And I don't mean like they won't work per se, but there are some small issues there that I've been working on. And I really appreciate your guys' understanding and patience in that matter. I see people going there. If you're going there and trying to download some uh, the uh, free documents, they I did put some documents up. I double checked them. I made some changes. It wasn't that they weren't there. It's just that the, some of the things that I set up uh, may not have worked properly. I know that some people went there and had some trouble with downloading a couple of documents. And I went in to see what I did wrong and I corrected it. I did not realize I made a boo-boo. All right, as always, please give us a thumbs up if you like the episodes. I don't, I, obviously, this episode's coming to a close, but I tell you for future episodes, guys, if you like what you're hearing, if you can see where this can help you, please give us a thumbs up. I can't tell you how it just makes me smile, not only physically, but on the inside as well. It just makes my heart, it, it does my heart good to see it. Because it lets me know that you guys really appreciate what we're doing here. We have a passion for it. As you can see, we have a passion for this industry. And the thing is, we want to make sure the right information gets out there so that you guys can do something special 
in your life with this business model, but you've got to know what to do and how to do it, right? So give us a thumbs up if during any episode. And also, please make comments. Uh, we would like comments, whether it's during the show or whether it's uh, at, at uh, YouTube or Facebook. Uh, I have had some people make some comments, and I had last, one last Friday. And, uh, and then the coming spurts, and I thank you guys for it. I really do. Uh, retweet our post on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to be expanding into the other platforms. I have various uh, Twitter accounts for what not to do in network marketing, uh, the MLM solution, and a couple of others uh, that will decimate this information or disseminate. <laughs> decimate. <laughs> disseminate this information into what? Uh, into the other platforms. That way there'll be more exposure for people. I have followers in the thousands on other platforms. <laughs> and I've just been trying to get the MLM solution brand up and running because that's what we bring to the table. We bring a solution to the MLM dilemma that you guys face, and that is the lack of proper information and guidance and help on how to make this business model work for you. All right. With that being said, I have rambled on enough. I once again appreciate your all's time. I appreciate your all, you guys being here, and uh, I appreciate everything you do for us. Without you guys, we have nothing. With that, I'm going to hop off here. I'll see you guys tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, love you guys. God bless you guys. Go out and make a positive impact on the world because the world's a better place when you do. And please protect yourself from the virus. We don't want any of you guys, we don't want any of our fellow human beings to suffer any more than they have to. You guys take care and God bless. We'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with another show chock full of great information you will not get anyplace else. Take care.